Hey everybody, it's just a few days after Christmas for me and I've been so crazy busy just having so much fun with my friends and family, but I'm really happy now that I have some time to sit down and start crafting again. I'm making a thank you card using the Snow Much stamp set from Simon Says Stamps January Card Kit. I'm gonna start off by using some Strathmore Vellum Surface Mixed Media Paper. I have it in a nine by 12 inch pad and I'll take a sheet and cut it down into smaller panels. I'll just use one for this project, but I'll save the others for future projects, which is nice because then I already have them cut and ready to go. I'm going to be watercoloring, so this cardstock is a nice, thick, 140 pound cardstock, so it holds up really nicely, even if you use a lot of water. And the technique I'll be using is a repeated stamping technique. I'll take two of the penguins from the stamp set and repeatedly stamp them over the card base. And I'm using my mini Misty stamping tool so that I can stamp the images multiple times and then I get a really nice solid black image. I'm stamping with uh, Stampin' Up Archival Black Ink. And then I'm applying Hero Arts clear embossing powder over the stamped images, which gives the penguins a nice sheen because the embossing powder dries um, shiny after it melts. And then I also make sure that I run an anti-static powder tool over the paper before I stamp so that the embossing powder only sticks to the inked areas. And then what I do after stamping is I clean off the stamps with my Lawn Fawn stamp chamois. So the chamois gets stained so it looks dirty but the stained chamois doesn't transfer any ink back onto the stamps. So I clean them off and then I take a scratch piece of paper and I just apply it over the stamps just to make sure that they're completely dry and there's not any more ink on them. That way I don't transfer any ink back onto my project because I've done that before when I'm almost done with a project and then I accidentally smudge some ink on it. So I just try to be careful not to do that. With a lot of my projects, that's how I tend to work is pretty carefully and methodically. Not, not all the time, that's just usually how I work and everybody works a little bit differently and I've just found that for me, I do my best work when I work a little bit more slowly and I take a little bit more time, maybe doing an extra step just to make sure that the project comes out the way that I want it to. But I'm working on releasing that feeling that my projects need to be perfect because these are handmade cards and each one is going to be unique and a little different and that's what makes them special. And actually some of the best cards can arise from when you think that you've made a mistake. So you try to cover it up or fix it and then you end up with a project turning out into something more beautiful and creative than you had originally imagined. So perfect is not what I'm aiming for. It's just to do my best and to have fun while I'm doing it. So it's here that I realize that the Mini Misty isn't gonna be big enough for this project because I'm stamping a lot of the penguins off of the paper. So that's where I need to switch to the Tim Holtz stamping platform so I have more room. And the stamping platform by Tim Holtz, I'm not sure if it'll be available much longer, but the Misty stamping tool does come in a larger size, so that would work for this project too. And I put a piece of scratch paper underneath my card panel just so that when I stamp off of the project, then the ink doesn't transfer onto the platform. And this just makes cleaning up so much easier. So for Christmas this year, I am very thankful to my parents because they gave me a new camera and camera mount. So you may notice that I'm filming at a new camera angle than my previous videos. And that's because this new mount allows me to get this much better angle. So I think this is really gonna improve your ability to actually see what I'm doing. And I'm just so happy and grateful to my parents for giving me these wonderful presents that I'm making this special thank you card just for them. 
So I may fiddle a little more with the camera angle in future videos, but I think for the most part, this one is going to work pretty well. And what I'll do is just continue stamping and embossing until I've pretty much filled up the entire card panel, leaving just a small space for where I want the sentiment to go. So I'm going to be watercoloring this project and I want the card panel to remain flat while I'm coloring it. So I'm going to tape it to a hard board. And this is just the hard board that comes at the end of a paper pad. And I tape it down along the edges with some blue painter's tape, which is gonna be easy to remove after it's dry. So for the watercolor, I'm actually gonna be using Distress Ink as my watercolor. But instead of using an ink blending tool, I'm gonna turn the ink into watercolor. And you can do that by just smushing some of the ink directly onto a non-porous surface. I'm using a clear um, acrylic block, but you could also use like a piece of plastic. I'm using a number 12 round brush by the Silver Brush Company. I just dip my brush first in some clean, clear water and then apply that water to the spaces between the penguins. And then I'll go in with my color. I've been playing around with some color combinations and I really fell in love with the color trio Seedless Preserves, Victorian Velvet, and Milled Lavender. I realized for this project though that the Milled Lavender is just too pale and so it didn't really add much color to this project. It's mostly the Seedless Preserves and Victorian Velvet that combine into this really pretty pinkish purple color but I'm definitely going to use this color combination again on another card with an ink blending tool because the milled lavender really is pretty with the other two colors. I like that by taping the project to a hard board, I have the ability to tilt it and turn it so that I can get a better angle while I'm working. Um, if I had taped the project directly to my craft mat, I wouldn't have been able to do that. And these boards are really sturdy, so I can reuse this one multiple times. So I go in and apply my color, but if I get some color in a place that I don't want it to be, then that's totally fine because I can lift it up by going over it with some clean, clear water. And I just flood the area a little bit and then dab it up with a clean paper towel. And this lifts up most of the color and it's fine. And then I'll just go in with some more color, heat tool and I'll just apply it until I get the the look that I'm going for. So I'm going to add some shading to the penguins with the color hickory smoke for their bodies and wild honey for their beaks. I switched to a number 10 round brush because it's a little smaller. I probably could have used a number 10 on the whole project but it ended up being fine. Now when I'm working with watercolor I can be a little impatient by not allowing each area to dry completely, which isn't always great because when you're working with watercolor in two areas that are next to each other, if one color isn't completely dry, then it can leach out into the area adjacent to it, which is what happened with some of the beaks. And I probably should have done the beaks last, but whatever, it turned out fine. And I was able to lift up most of the color that bled through anyway. And it actually could have bled through much more than it did, but the clear embossing powder that I used acts a little like a barrier between the different areas, which is nice because then I don't have to be super, super precise with the color application. But one thing I'm really learning with watercolor is that it really does just have a mind of its own. And you kinda just have to let it do what it's going to do. If I had used something like markers for the penguins, then I definitely would have had more control. But I really like that watercolory look. And I'm happy with how the project turned out, so I'm really glad that I did it this way. Plus, it's fun for me to try new techniques and get different looks and to stretch my skills. So some of the penguins have little ice skates on. So I'm going to paint them the same way. I'll smush the color Stormy Sky onto my clear block and paint in their little ice skates. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give each of the penguins a cast shadow. So I'll mix some of the hickory smoke with the seedless preserves and I just paint a dark outline just outside the right side of each penguin. And that just makes it look like the penguins have little shadows. Since this card is pretty much a one layer card, not a lot of dimension to it, then this little touch of giving them the shadow just gives the card the illusion of depth. And then I'm gonna dry the card really, really well. So I'll hit it with my heat tool till it's completely dry. So when I go to remove the painter's tape, I peel the tape back at a right angle to the paper. And this just helps the tape to remove more smoothly and make it less likely that the paper will tear. And there's gonna be this white outline around the edges, but I'll eventually trim down the panel so it'll be fine. Then I'm gonna stamp one of the sentiments from the stamp set. It reads, so much thanks. And I'll stamp it with Versamark ink and apply Hero Arts white embossing powder. I actually heat the powder and then decide that I'm going to stamp it again, which is one of the reasons why I love my Misty and highly recommend it because I can just stamp right over it again apply more embossing powder and then I'll get this really thick bright white embossing that really makes the sentiment just stand out really well. And then I'm going to fill in some of the gaps between the penguins with smaller stamps from the set. So I'm going to use the heart, the X, and the O. And I'm stamping them in whisper white pigment ink but it didn't really show up as bright as I wanted it to. My ink pad was a little dry, but I just decided that I was gonna stamp the image and then I'll go over it with a Uni Posca paint pen. I really, really love using these pens for adding details like this. I'm using the extra fine point, but the fine point pen would probably work fine too. So I'm going to continue stamping these little elements between the penguins and I probably overthink the placement a little too much. It really doesn't matter. I'm just adding them in randomly so that it just adds more fullness to the card. Then I'm gonna use my heat tool just to make sure that all the paint is completely dry because I'm gonna trim off the edges. I cut down the panel to five and a quarter by four inches with my Fiskars paper trimmer. And then I don't do this with all my cards, but this one just seemed like it really needed it. I went around the edges of the card just really, really lightly with black soot distress ink and an ink blending tool. So now I'm going to adhere the panel to a card base of Nina Solar White cardstock. When I first bought this cardstock, I took the entire stack to my local FedEx store and they cut down the eight and a half by 11 inch sheets right in half. So now I have this big stack of flat card bases that I can just score down the middle with my scoreboard. It just costs a few dollars and having them already cut is so convenient. And for a normal card, I probably would have just used a tape runner to adhere the front panel, but because I was using like such a thick card stock, I decided to use score tape. And the score tape is just a little bit stronger the tape runner probably would have been fine, but it just gives me peace of mind knowing that I'm using a stronger adhesive. So that is my completed card. I really like how it turned out and I think my parents will really like it. The stamp set is available from Simon Says Stamp in either the January card kit or you can purchase it separately. I'll have links in the description box below for the corresponding post on my blog and links to where you can purchase some of the supplies that I used. I'm really excited about 2019 because I have so many ideas and projects in mind to share with you. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get notifications when I post a new video. Thank you all so much for your support and I'll see you next year in my next video. Bye.